so many tunes. We'll play a little bit of blues, which is a Jerry Reed song that Chet recorded. Top of the head, no planning, no no thought, no nothing, no preparation, and no clue to the rhythm section. <laughs>
you. Thank you. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, John. We've got a lot more show coming. And thank you, Mark and Carol Pritchard. In, in, keeping of, in keeping with the focus of this segment, the music that Chet likes so much, I'd like to introduce you again to the Yosho Stefan Trio. You know, for all practical purposes, Chet played in the hot club of Knoxville in the 1940s with Homer and Jethro. He listened to the 78s of the hot club of France and he emulated Django. Chet adapted Django's flashy hot licks into a pattern that could be played with thumb and fingers instead of a plectrum. His well-known tunes, Main Street Breakdown and Gallopin' on the Guitar, were studies in Django's music. Later on, Chet got with Billy Ed Wheeler and he wrote a song about Django and they actually overdubbed a solo on Django's tune, I'll See You In My Dreams. I was uh, fortunate enough to be able to introduce Chet to Django's son in 1995, probably. And uh, of course, Chet got Django's autograph in Chicago in 1946, and he treasured that forever. So, without further ado, Yosho Stefan, Gunter, and Mark Schaff.
Thank you very much. New Arch from Django Reinhardt. We do one more, and we have a guest on drums, Tommy Emanuel, for the next song, Annie Sackle Rose.
One more. One more. One more. One more. Max Schaaf, bass, Tommy Emanuel, drums, Joshua Stefanita. Thank you very much. Thank you. What about that? Well, I'm speechless. When you see the next guy come on stage, you know we're in the home stretch. For the newcomers here, let me say a few words while they're taking their places. Our next performer was featured on Chet's last CD, Finger Pickers Took Over the World. He's been playing at the festival here every year since 1997. 96. 96. <laughs> He's the Johnny Appleseed of fingerstyle guitar. I always know where he is in the world because I get phone calls and emails from the places where he's just been. A new member here who's, who's attended this week has played guitar for 30 years. Last year he was driving in Florida as Tommy was doing a radio spot for a concert in Orlando. When the music started he had to pull his car off the road and get his wits about it before he could continue. <laughs> he called the station found out who was playing, bought a mate, joined the society, came here and has a new musical family, 
and a new respect for Chet and Fingers Style Guitar. How many times have you heard stories similar to that? He's really a he's really a treasure. We're honored that he has done so much for uh, Chet's music and for uh, for guitar playing around the world. I think since January, he's checked with us from uh, Germany, Australia, Holland, England. Uh, I said Germany, didn't I? Germany, Italy, Croatia. It goes on and on and on. The, the journey continues. Pat was... letting us know about the Endless String Quartet, String Quartet from Kentucky, and it just seemed like a, a wonderful addition to bring them down. They played with them with the Lexington Symphony, and uh, I think it's really been a good addition. What do y'all think? So, yeah. Tommy Emanuel.
very much. That, uh, that song means a great deal to me, and I'll tell you why. Because it was the very first time in my life that I was able to give something back to Chad. I came up with that arrangement in 1977 when I saw the movie Borsalino, and it just haunted me, this melody. And I discovered that it just fell under the fingers. Playing in A. It just fell under the fingers. So I came up with that arrangement. And for the first time in my life, I got a chance to surprise Chet with something new, as he'd done to me all my life. And it was a great moment to be able to give him something back. And you know, he fell in love with that tune and he loved to play it. And it was such a thrill for me. It gave me chicken skin. Every time I, when I was staying at the house and I'd, I'd get up early in the morning and I'd hear him playing in the kitchen and I'd hear this. And he, he's like the rest of us, when he got a new tune, that's all he wanted to play, you know? And so that song, and I've never told anybody that, but that's, that just come to me as I was playing it now, that that was one of the reasons why we, we uh, agreed that we really wanted to do that tune. Um, and so it was a really feel that that song and waltzing Matilda, uh, we got a chance to, uh, to play that together. It was, a, it was a beautiful day, the day that we recorded Waltzing Matilda, because it was, the, it was the first time that we'd sat down with microphones and with a proper recording engineer and actually tried to record something properly together. And I remember Chad was having trouble with his nails because they were very brittle because of all the um, medication he'd been taking. So he actually got me to cut them off. And I remember I got the scissors and he's holding his hand, it was kind of trembling a little bit, and I went snip and it flew about 50 feet down the hallway. Like that. But you know, it didn't bother him at all. I just kind of did the, got the file and filed his nail back, and he just got out some steel picks, like a banjo player, and put up, picked up his uh, steel string Gibson um, SST. And that's what, he, that's what he used. He just found a way of making it work and it was fine. I had a, uh, uh, a request to play my little Chet medley tonight too, and uh, I'd like, like very much to do that.
Jerry's part for me. We're going to do a song that we love to play very much. And this is from the second Chet and Jerry album. It's a beautiful melody, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to try and conjure up a little bit of the Del Vecchio with my maiden here. Yeah. I was last time I left.
Richard Smith, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Rich. Thank you. Okay. I've got one, one more to play for you. And um, I want to thank you all so much for all the love that you, that you give us players here. Because there's nothing that we love more than getting up here and playing for you. And uh, we are, we're, we're being brought together by the spirit and the love of Chet's music and of the man that, that he was. And um, uh, when you had him for a friend, you never had a better friend. And that's, a, that's the truth. And, um, and I know that we'll all, all of us here who love his music and grew up listening to his music, will spend the rest of our days enjoying it and handing it on. And uh, hopefully see generation after generation um, flowering because of, of what we're trying to do here to keep this music alive and um, I know that as long as God gives me legs to get around the world that I will continue to spread the gospel uh, as, as long as I draw breath and beyond that I'll be back to annoy you anyway so. <laughs> And uh, just an extra big thanks to Broadway Sound and uh, Clayton, who's done such a tireless and incredible job on the sound. Thanks, Clayton. Get it! Get it!
Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think let's let's take a trip back. Let's go back to Luttrell again and start again from the days of, uh, of Billy Rose and uh, Studio B and Chet and uh, Country Music and Boodle O'Brien, Boo Trandolph, Charlie McCoy, folks who go way back to the beginning. This came about from Megan listening to the DVD, A Life in Music, the story of Chet's life. And she saw an interview with George Benson, who was discussing how much fun it was to be at Chet's, listening to Floyd Kramer, and jamming, and uh, getting ideas for, for recording. George knew that, that Floyd was a stylist, as was Chet and George. And to recreate a bit of that sound, Robert Anderson will play a bit of Chet's part on Dream. And Jim Nichols will recreate a bit of George Benson's music. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Floyd's, Floyd Kramer's grandson, Jason Coleman, is here to recreate the piano part. First tune, though, is uh, a standard that was written by Boodle O'Brien and Chet. Chet wrote the music, and Megan will have a uh, morning and Jason to help, and uh, Ben Hall to help with the vocals. And uh, I'll turn it over to Megan. Before before I do, how about how about uh, having uh, Megan's family stand? Billy Rose and uh, and her parents. If you would just like to stand. Megan. Yeah, I actually ran into uh, Boodle and Felice Bryant's son uh, one day last week at work, and, and I told him that, you know, out here we had been playing things like I Can Hear Kentucky Calling Me and uh, keeping alive some of their work, too, and he was very appreciative and uh, was glad that we were doing that. So this is one of those songs. When we get ready.
this next song is probably is about as jazzy as I'll ever get. <laughs> I'm just a country girl, you know, so. But I love this song, and it's real special to a lot of people, so. And this is going to be pretty cool. <laughs> I'm not, you know, partial or anything, so. Is there anybody here who was not here for Tommy's concert Friday night? A few. The, the, I'm gonna. It, it's worth repeating anyway. The uh, Tommy was walking through the lobby, and there was one guy saying, "I've got more albums than you do. I've got more signed autographs than you do. I've got more uh, cassettes than you do." And the other guy was saying, "Yeah, but I've got more videos than you do. I've got more DVDs than you do." And it went on and on for five or ten minutes, and Tommy just shook his head and said, there's nothing worse than chetnuts bursting in an open foyer.
Well, Megan Taylor, Robert Anderson, Boots Randolph, Charlie McCoy. Too bad we couldn't get any names. <laughs> and uh, Jason what Coleman. a wonderful string section. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Jason Coleman up here. The old clock on the wall tells us that it's time to get ready for the last three numbers and to get us in the mood and to remind us one more time of the classic music of Chet. We'd like to ask Guy Van Duzer to render us a tune on uh, Swedish Rhapsody. As soon as we get set up. I was thinking of Guy this week on the on the July, on July 4th last week. I knew that up in Boston, Guy would be playing, and you would hear the stars and stripes bouncing against the skyscrapers of Boston. I could I could hear him down in Knoxville. Yeah. Looks like I got No jamming on Swedish Rhapsody now. No jamming. You can't jam on Swedish Rhapsody. Legendary Boots Randolph and Charlie McCoy. I don't know what the hell to do up here after all this stuff. 
Being a saxophone player this bunch is like being a pair of brown shoes in a room full of black tuxedos. <laughs> Chet Atkins was a great friend of mine, and I hope I was a good friend of his. We worked together many years. He and Floyd Kramer and I did a lot of shows out through all through the country. And some worlds that we ain't even been to yet, but uh, some of our music, uh, I guess, was dated at the time, and it still is. But it's good music. A lot of these old standards. We're gonna play one of the great old gospel songs called "A Closer Walk with You."
think of how good I would have been if I could use a cable on this thing. Uh, you know, uh, Chet Atkins recorded that song too. I call it Yakety Sax, and of course he called it Yakety Axe. And you know something I heard, I'm not sure if it's the truth or not, but it's the biggest single that Chet ever had. Is that right? Well, that ain't saying much for me, is it? <laughs> Boy, this is, this is a great night here. Some of the greatest guitar players in the world, and probably are the best guitar players in the world. Yeah! Or at least the best on this stage at this time. Not true. Anywhere. Some of you guys came from another planet. This guy right there has got to be from somewhere else besides the world. Yeah, I'm going to you, uh, We're going to do one more tune to kind of get involved with everybody here, and there's no telling what's going to happen on this thing. Called Sweet Georgia Brown. Yeah. I'm, I'm not there. I'm not there. Yeah. I'm not there.